Hey, how you doing? It's Emilio here. I love tech and hopefully you do too. And in this video, we're talking about 20 home server projects that you can be trying yourself. Now here's the deal, is you don't have to have necessarily a full blown server like what you find in a business, like these big rack things, these blade servers, even cloud servers. We're not talking about that stuff. We're talking about computers at home that you can repurpose and reuse install server software, essentially converting them into servers in a way, and then what you can be trying. A few things before we do get into that one. So as you know, I love playing around with servers. I love building new tech, physical tech and virtual tech. And what I also love is the ease of being able to also do that in the cloud, to be able to build a server in the cloud to be able to easily scale up and scale down based on the needs. Now we of course know all of the big providers that offer these services, but there's a company that I've been using for a little while called Liquid Web that do a lot of great stuff from a cloud perspective where you can actually go and deploy your servers. You can go and pick exactly the CPU, the RAM that you need, the hard drive capacity, and then the operating system. And this interface is really, really easy to use. Being able to access it from absolutely everywhere just makes the whole process so much easier. And it's actually going to be cheaper for you than some of these big ones that are out there right now. So if you wanna set up your own cloud-based server, go check out Liquid Web. I've got a link to it down below in this video description. Love it if you click on that subscription button. Let me know that you enjoyed my content by clicking on that bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Check out some of my training courses. If you wanna become better at tech, we've got courses on a whole bunch of stuff. So you can see those in the description of this video. Now, before we even get started, you gotta have a think about what sort of platform you're going to be using. Okay, because if you're talking about server stuff, you can either grab a Windows box, Windows 11, for example, and then you start installing some server software onto it. So it's essentially running a desktop version of the operating system, but then it has almost like a server functionality. But then there are other examples where you actually remove the operating system altogether from your computer and install server-based operating systems. So you can install Windows Server, you can install various versions of Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu. All right, now here's the thing. Most businesses are gonna be running some form of a domain. And behind the scenes, it may be getting managed by Active Directory. Now Active Directory is a Microsoft tool that you can essentially run on top of a Windows server, whatever version of Windows server you wanna run, you can start playing around with Active Directory to manage your users, your computers, your security groups, and a whole bunch of stuff. There's OUs, organizational units. A little side note is nowadays, Microsoft has this thing called Azure AD or Entra, where you essentially can run Active Directory now in the cloud. We're not talking about that. We're talking about you trying and building AD get to understand AD from a Windows Server perspective. Together with AD, you've got all the bells and whistles that come with a Microsoft Server. That includes setting it up as a DNS server. Now, when you are installing Active Directory, you can install the DNS component and then take advantage of the name resolutions between IP addresses and host names. You need to learn about A name records, C name records, TXT records, all these different sorts of records for different things, all these DNS records. So building yourself a DNS server. Then a DHCP server, the thing that is dishing out, pushing out IP addresses to devices out on a network. Really important to learn about DHCP scopes. Learn about lease times, and you can also deploy it on Windows Server. But here's the other thing, is even if you wanna play around with Linux, then you can also do it on a Linux environment. Start building your DHCP server on Linux or even on Windows Server. Install virtualization server software onto your computer. Now I'm gonna talk about maybe probably the three bigger ones that are out there. There's a lot more, right? These are the three big ones, VMware, Hyper-V, and Proxmox. I would say they're probably the three leaders right now in the virtualization space, giving the functionality of what's called a hypervisor to a computer. And then you can actually go and build a whole bunch of VMs within this environment. So what you can do is if you've got an old computer, if you've got an old server, whatever it is, removing the Windows operating system, removing Linux altogether, run it with Proxmox, run it with Windows Server, but then install Hyper-V or run it with VMware ESXi. Once it's on there, you can then start building a whole bunch of VMs. And a lot of these servers that we're gonna be talking about, you essentially can build them within this virtualization platform. And this is great because now you don't have to go buy 
20 computers. You don't have to have 20 computers spare. You can maybe have maybe two or three computers and then play around with these 20 things that we're talking about. Now you need to protect your network, especially from all the bad people that are trying to get into your network. And especially if you're working as a security person or a network person or a systems person in a company, it's pretty important to protect the data, protect all the systems from malicious attack. All right, so what you can do is you can play around with firewalls. And yes, you've got physical firewalls. You've got Palo Alto, you've got Cisco, you've got Juniper, you've got all these firewalls that are physical hardware. Or then I recommend go and try and build a server-based firewall. One that I love, free, open source, you can go play around with it, is called PFSense. And what's cool is it actually provides a lot of the commercial stuff that you're gonna find in hardware-based firewalls. So in here, you can play around with packet filtering. You can do some NAT stuff. You can do VPNs. You can do web-based security, allowing only certain things in, certain things out. Manage your traffic, manage your load, and detect and prevent intrusions. Probably the better way that I recommend getting this running is running through a Linux platform and firewall router. This is the one, gotta try it. Hey, I've got a website, you can go check it out, www.emilioaguero.net is where you can find a whole bunch of stuff. And you can actually build your own website as well. So why don't you try go and build yourself a web server? Web server, lots of great web server solutions out there. One that I love that I think is just so easy to use. There's these things called plugins, there's themes, it's free, it's open source. You can pay for stuff if you don't find it on the free versions. WordPress, set it up on your server. Again, it can run on lots of different systems, on your Windows side, on your Linux side. I've got these little mini PCs that I love. And I was able to just get WordPress running onto one of these using Casa OS. You need to learn a little bit more about databasing? Well, try a database server. Database servers, a DBA, database administrator, knows all about database servers. You got MySQL, you got Microsoft SQL, you got Oracle, you've got all these other ones out there. Go and set up a database server. Learn a little bit about databases. You can understand around the structure, around how databases are made. I gotta tell you about Docker. And this is where we talk about a Docker server, a spot for building and managing containers. You've got physical servers, you've then got virtual servers, and then you got containers. And especially if you wanna play around with development stuff, you can automate the deployment of applications within these containers. The containers can contain your code and you can ensure consistency across your dev testing and production environments. You know what I love doing after a long day of work? It's just chillax, do a bit of couch potatoing and just watch some movies, watch some TV shows. I went on a trip somewhere and I wanna watch some of those videos when I went on a holiday to Europe, is I can convert one of my computers into a media server. One that I love, Plex Media Server, there's a lot of other ones out there, but it's just a simple way that you can download some server software called Plex and then grab all of your video content, your movies and stuff, chuck it into Plex, and then Plex will go and do a whole bunch of scanning behind the scenes, download all your nice cover art of all of your movies, your TV shows, and then maybe your streaming platforms, your Apple TVs, if you've got like a smart device, you can download the Plex application, and then you can start streaming all of your stuff, and you can centrally manage Plex and all of your content from one of these media servers. Endpoint protection, something that is monitoring stuff on a network. Now we are gonna be just using the term endpoint protection because there's a lot of solutions in this space that can do specialist things. Things that can do intrusion detection, things that check your malware, things that check for viruses, things that check for malicious activity on your network, malicious activity on computers and on servers. You've got Sophos, you've got Defender, you've got CrowdStrike, you've got all these other ones that are out there that its whole point, its whole purpose is to make sure that systems are safe and that the bad guys are kept out. You can actually set up a VPN server. Now the VPN server components can be running on a Windows, on a Linux server. You can run them potentially on lots of routers. You're outside your home, you're on your computer, you wanna have a secure, trusted, virtual private network to your home, try building a VPN server. Now we talked a little bit about the Linux operating systems and we've mentioned Ubuntu, we've mentioned CentOS, you can play around with Red Hat, but here's one that I would say, right? This is, this is you removing the operating system, whatever you've got, go and download Kali Linux, K-A-L-I, if you wanna become a cyber pro, and this is like the hacker pen tester toolbox. You wanna learn about the tricks of the trade, things that security professionals use to prevent malicious attacks. You need to know your enemy 
to stop that enemy, right? You need to know the way that hackers get in so that you can then put in systems in place that protects you and your network and your servers, right? So go download Kali Linux. It is like, honestly, it's really cool. Do ads annoy you? Ads annoy me. I'm sorry, I know you're watching this on YouTube and I'm sorry that there are ads. You don't want ads and pop-ups and things like this on devices on your network. Try Pi-hole, P-I-hole. Essentially a network-wide ad blocker. Works a little bit like a DNS, prevents essentially unwanted content such as ads, tracking. It can check this block list and if the domain is listed, Adios, muchacho, it's not working. You can run Pi-hole on Linux. You can run it within a container. We mentioned Docker and even, hey, Raspberry Pi. I've got myself a little Raspberry Pi in this cool little box. Check this out. This is, this is like the smallest little original Nintendo ever. Inside of it is a Raspberry Pi and you can run Pi-hole right on it. I love me a bit of gaming. So sometimes it's cool to actually have a gaming server. Let's say you have a big LAN party. You're inviting all of your friends over, bring your PCs, come on over. Let's have a big shindig and play games. Build your own gaming server. You like Minecraft, you like Counter-Strike. I love Counter-Strike. You can actually build a server. And then the server itself does all the grunt work and all the devices, all your computers that are running the game software connect into your private game server that you have just built. You need a file server. And of course you can run file servers on multiple operating systems. For example, on Windows Server, you can actually set it up as a file server. You throw in all of your files, all of your directories, you create all of your permission structure, and then you can allow people access or not allow people access. You can sort of centrally manage it all on one spot. So now all of your files are accessible to any device that is on your network. If you want to, you can actually convert one of these computers into a NAS as well. A NAS is a network attached storage and install something like FreeNAS slash TrueNAS and you can convert your computer into a NAS. Then another good one is a SIEM and a LEM. SIEM and LEM, what are these things? SIEM stands for Security Information and Event Management. Be a server to do basic security monitoring, real-time analysis, threat detection, and incident response, and then track all of that in event logs. The LEM is mainly focused on collecting and storing and managing all of these logs. Think about all the solutions, all the devices, all the software that you got running on a network. Well, they all spit out logs everywhere, right? You need to do some administration, you need to check the status on things. Why did something go wrong? You've got to go in, log into that system and have a look through the logs. The LEM gets all the logs and you can see them all in the one spot. I've got all this uh, smart gear at home, right? And, and you can use the Apple ecosystem for managing all of your smart devices, turning lights on, playing music here or there. You can use even the Amazon stuff. They're all pretty cool. Google has their own ones too. You can also use all of these and integrate them all together and manage them through this thing called Home Assistant. I love me this thing. I've actually got it running through a CASA OS operating system, which is again, a front end for a Linux backend. And now all of my devices can be centrally managed using this. It's really cool. Now when I'm building all of my servers, but I've also got all this other tech, right? There's all this other hardware, other devices on my network. How do I ensure that it remains healthy? How do I ensure that no resources are lacking? How do I make sure that if something goes down or if there's an alert, I'm notified? This is where you can get a monitoring server built. And there's a whole bunch of great ones that are paid. But there's also a whole bunch of freebies. I'm going to recommend probably two of my favorite ones that are free and you can try them. Zabbix would be one and Nagios will be another one. Go and try them out. I run them generally on a Linux platform. So go and download Linux, Ubuntu or CentOS and then install Zabbix or Nagios. And then you can essentially point all your devices into these platforms and get alerted when things are looking fishy, when things are going down. Get a nice map of your network and ensure that it stays up and healthy. Now, every single company is gonna to need to do patching of their fleet of devices, right? Patching of lots of stuff. So there's a few things here. Well, we're talking about a patching server, but there's a few things that you can do here. One, you can download and install Windows Server and install it as a WSUS server. You can play around with this other technology called SCCM, okay? Then there's other third-party applications that you can actually install, like one would be SolarWinds Patch Manager, Foglight would be another one. There's all these other ones allowing you to centrally manage patches across your environment, that you have ability to control when patches are actually deployed against systems. Hey, you got all this data. Imagine, imagine you've built yourself an awesome file server and then that file server goes adios and it's gone and you've lost all that data. 
This is why it's important for you to have a solution in place, a service set up for the purpose of backups, making sure that it's running daily, making sure that those backups are being backed up to somewhere, to another server, to a NAS, to a USB drive, backed up to the cloud, that they're sent off site. Set yourself up a backup server. A few that you can use, Veeam would be one of the leaders. There's a lot of solutions out there, some that are free, some that are for home, some that are more corporate-y. Backup servers are gonna be pretty essential. Let me know in the comments which one you're gonna try and build yourself. Subscribe as well, clicking on that notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you on the next video.